Hey everybody, welcome to the channel. Welcome to all the new subscribers. For all of you out there that have followed the channel for the last couple of months, uh, I typically upload a video once a week and you've likely noticed that over the last three weeks I actually haven't uploaded a video. And the reason why is my wife and I, we just barely or just recently closed on a home here in Austin, Texas that we converted into a, a rental property. Uh, if you follow other such channels like Graham Stephan or Meet Kevin, uh, they always talk about finding that wedge deal or that deal that is under market value and then you fix it up, you do some minor renovations and then it uh, it brings the, uh, the value of the property up. And that's what, what my wife and I did and you know, the last couple of weekends where I I normally would, you know, create a video or, or uh, do something here on YouTube. Um, we've invested that time uh, to fixing up the property so that we could rent it out. And uh, but yeah, that's that's kind of where, where I'm at there. But if you're new to the channel, on this channel we talk about growing passive income or cash flow through dividend growth investing. And I'm extremely transparent. Um, here on the screen, what you're seeing is my, my dividend portfolio here with M1 Finance. Um, I, I've been sharing my journey here on YouTube for the last couple of, of months now. And uh, yeah, I mean, if, if this is something that you're interested in, I'd invite you to subscribe and, um, you know, check out my, my future videos here on the topic. So in today's video, I want to share with everybody how I was able or how I'm able to invest into dividend, a dividend growth portfolio or uh, index fund for free. Okay, so that's what we're going to be talking about today. Um, and just, just to throw that out here, I use M1 Finance. This is not unique to M1 Finance. You can do this with Robinhood, with Schwab, with any brokerage. I personally have chosen M1 Finance. I think it's a, it's a great platform for dividend growth investors. And that's why I'm sharing this platform um, because I also am invested with my Vanguard account, my Robinhood account. Um, but this is just kind of my, this is my preference or my go-to. All right. So what I'm talking about, your own, you know, your free, index fund or building your own index fund. And the reason why I love it with M1 Finance is I can invest into fractional shares. With Robinhood, I have to invest into whole shares and I just don't always have the capital every single week, every single month to go in and buy full shares. For example, if I were to buy McDonald's, I mean, it's just upwards of $200. And, and I mean, sometimes that's, that's how much I have to invest for the entire week. Um, if you follow the channel, you know that I set my portfolio on autopilot. I invest every single day. Um, I invest typically $50. I've dialed it back for these last couple of months so that we could save up for that rental property. Um, but going forward here now, I intend to, to up that up to back to $50 every single day. And what I do is I, I set up my, going back here, I set up my target allocation with my individual slices and then I have it on autopilot and then M1 Finance will go in and purchase the, uh, the shares uh, based off of my target allocation. But what I want to show, share with you today is how I have built my own free index fund. And so if you don't know what an index fund is, the way that I like to think about an index fund is I think of it as a basket of, of anything, a basket of, of fruit, a basket of, of, you know, a shopping cart, whatever it is, and it's filled with different items in it. And the items here would be, for example, individual companies. For example, you could have PepsiCo in here, you could have Coca-Cola, uh, you could have many different companies in this basket. Now, if you buy individual stocks, you can buy this, this can of Coke individually. You can buy a whole share of Coke, or you could buy a basket or a full basket of, of individual companies or, uh, you know, with with one purchase price, and that is what we would call an index fund, an ETF, a mutual fund. That's kind of the, the gist of it. And so that's kind of how I think about it. And if I were to buy each one of these companies individually, I see that as purchasing my own own index fund for, for you know, that's, that's kind of how I view it, okay? And so that's what I mean by building your own free mutual fund or index fund um, by doing it yourself, by buying individual companies in your portfolio and then setting them up with, uh, with a certain target allocation or percentage, that's, that's really no different than an ETF. Um, if you go over here to ETF.com and if we were to look at the Vanguard S&P 500, 
if we go down here and we see, okay, the S and P five hundred, it's uh, you know America's five you know five lar five hundred largest companies, and with Vanguard, what the fund managers at Vanguard do is they go in and they see, okay, which companies do we want to hold in here? And in this case, it's going to be all five hundred because that's what it is. But they're not going to be all weighted the exact same. Right, and this is this is incredibly important. So, with Vanguard, if you were to purchase VOO, um, this is the uh, the market allocation, the market, uh, the the different companies that you would be invested in with this ETF, right? And so, for example, it's heavily weighted, or you know, I guess heavily in the, in this case, com comparative to the other long tail holdings within the ETF, but it's got a little over 4% in Microsoft, just under 4% in Apple, and so forth. So, and then what, what you can do is you can see here, okay, not all of these companies are weighted equally in this ETF, right? It's, if the further you go down, it drops off dramatically, right? If you were to invest into Key Corp, I mean, the, you're, you're getting a little bit of exposure, but when you say you're invested into Key Corp, I mean, very marginally. I mean, you, you, the fund only doesn't even have a full percentage invested into Key Corp, right? And so what I like to do is I say, okay, all right, I want to invest into these great businesses. And, and in terms of full disclosure, I am invested in ETFs. I love ETFs. Uh, in my Vanguard account, um, one of my favorite ETFs is VTI in the Vanguard Total Stock, Stock Market Fund, as well as VOO, the Vanguard S&P 500. Um, another one, I'll throw a third one out there. My favorite um, Vanguard ETFs is VNQ in the Vanguard Real Estate Index Fund. So I'm a big fan of ETFs, but also what I like to do is I like to also invest in the individual stocks. And this is really, this is not financial advice. This is just me sharing with, with everybody here on YouTube what's worked for me, what I've chosen to do. Now, if, and this is also depends on your risk tolerance, right? If, if you're very risk averse, I, I think, you know, going with a, you know, a broad-based index fund, you're not going to go wrong. But if you want to get a, take a little bit more control over your finances, this is something that you can look into. All right. And so this is how I have my portfolio set up. So I have different, um, you know, funds or different companies in each individual uh, sector. So I have companies in financial services. For example, I have Wells Fargo. I have the Travelers Company, a major uh, insurance company here um, in the U.S., actually on the, the Dow. I mean, I'm, I'm invested really into larger blue chip companies. Uh, and, you know, for example, if you're going to the the industrial uh, pie or slice here. You know, I'm investing in the 3M, UPS, Union Pacific, Waste Management. A lot of these companies, Caterpillar, Honeywell, a lot of these companies, Boeing, you're going to know, you're going to recognize, you're going to also be a consumer of. I mean, when I when I fly for work, I typically fly with Southwest. I, I'm actually a consumer of these goods. We usually fly Southwest on a Boeing uh, via uh, aircraft. So this is kind of how, how I've done it. But what I want to share with everybody is if you want to build your own index fund for free, just pretty much the exact same thing um, that you would get here with the Vanguard VOO S&P 500, what you can do is if you have an M1 finance account or if you use Robinhood, you can do it however you, you like. The reason why I really like M1 finance is you can set up the target allocation by percentage. And then what M1 Finance will do is will automatically invest into your underweight holdings. Uh, let, me, let me go back here and show you, show you that. This, this is really, really important. So when I invest every single day, I invest $30, $50, what it's going to do, what M1 Finance is going to do, it's going to automatically invest into my underweight holdings. This top percentage here is my actual, this bottom is my target. So what I'm trying to do right now is I'm trying to really build out my utility sector. And what it's going to do is M1 Finance is then going to automatically invest into these companies because in the overall pie, this slice, this utility slice is underweight. And then it's going to invest based off of my target allocation right here. So 20% is going to go into WTR. 10% uh, is going to go into Duke, Dominion, and so forth. And what I can do is I can edit this 
and I can change it up how I see fit. Let's say, for example, I want to be more conservative. I could then up the, uh, the percentage in a certain holding and then decrease in another holding. And you have that flexibility, right? And what I would say is you don't want to always go and fiddle around with it. I mean, you, you, want, your, you want to give it time to let your, your money compound and grow. You don't want to change up things too, too much. Um, you hear that advice from Warren Buffett, from Jack Bogle, and the, the greats and the great investing uh, influencers out there and, and teachers. And I, I kind of take that to heart. I, I really try not to change up my strategy very, very often. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to show everybody kind of how simple that is, what you can do. Um, for example, some of my favorite dividend growth stocks. Um, and the, these are my, you know, I, this is not conclusive. These are just eight of some of my favorite that I've put together. Um, for example, with Clorox, uh, Coca-Cola, Pepsi, Waste Management, Disney, Johnson & Johnson, Microsoft, Procter & Gamble. So I'm getting exposure to Microsoft directly through through this uh, through this pie, right? And what I could do is say, okay, well, you know what? I think Microsoft is going to continue to crush it in the market. Then I could say, okay, I want to up this up. And I think uh, maybe there's a little bit more uncertainty with Johnson and Johnson. I still think it's a great buy, but there's a lot of things in the in the news right now. Maybe I'm I'm that I'm a little bit spooked by that. Maybe maybe not. You could then lower that. You could adjust it and say, okay, well, I want to then put 11% into Procter and Gamble. And what I'm highlighting here is just how simple and how easy it is, right? And what I've done is if you don't, if you're not really into picking stocks, let's say, for example, you know what, this is just a little bit over my head, Jake. I, I think it's, it's interesting, but you know what, I'm a little bit more conservative. That is completely fine. What you can do with, uh, for example, with M1 Finance here, you can then say, okay, all right, well, then I want to just invest into index funds or ETFs. Coming back to the ETF that I was talking about earlier with the Vanguard Total Market Fund, what I can do is I can add this to my basket or to my, my portfolio. And let's say, okay, well, I want to also add, um, you know, so here, what we can do is let's, let's create this. Um, uh, dividend ETFs. All right, let, we, can, we can say that simply for simplicity's sake. All right, another one that we could do is we could do the VIG, the Vanguard Dividend Appreciation Fund. If you haven't noticed already, I'm, I'm a pretty big fan of Vanguard funds. They're, they're, they're really my favorite. Uh, you could add this. And then let's say, okay, for example, we want to add DGRW. Uh, this is another dividend growth ETF. Well, let's go ahead and let's add this one. Let's say, okay, we want the, uh, well, let's try a different one. Let's try the, uh, the Spider S&P 500. Let's go ahead and let's add that. I don't know. Let's go. Let's take another one. The uh, the Nobles ProShare S and P 500 Dividend Aristocrat ETF. Let's go ahead and let's add this one. So if we add these, then what we can do is we can say, okay, all right, let's equalize them. But then you can say, okay, well, Jake, I, I want to be a little bit more conservative. We don't know what's going to happen in in the uh, in the global economy. Maybe maybe I want to be a little bit more conservative. So we can go over here under funds, and we can check for I don't know. Let's try. Uh, let's try the uh, the Vanguard total bond market. Let's let's add a little bit of exposure to bonds. Now, I personally don't invest into bonds, um, but you know that's because I'm in my 30s. I have plenty of time for my my money to grow and to compound. I'm not looking to to invest in bonds. But let's say, for example, maybe you're in your mid 40s, late 50s, or maybe you just not you want to hold on to your capital. Well, you can then invest into bonds. You can say, all right, well, let's put in 10% into bonds. Let's put this into 15. And then there you go. Then we can go ahead and we can say, all right, this is going to be our dividend ETF pie, right? Now, for me, the topic of the video is creating a free dividend mutual fund or indexed fund. Uh, and what I mean by that is when I say free, I mean you're not having to pay anything. This expense ratio, though it is very low, you're still having to pay for it. Now, if we go over to my favorites here, for example, there's no ETFs in here. You can see, okay, I am actually not paying anything. And you add that extra layer from M1 Finance, for example, through free trades. I am literally paying nothing to purchase these shares. Nothing. Absolutely free. This, this has totally revolutionized the way that I have invested. 
historically, up until a couple of years ago, I've always invested with TD Ameritrade, you know, paying those six, seven dollar uh, tra trading fees for buying and selling. With this, it is completely free. What I do with this is, and what I purchase every single day, I'm not paying anything, right? And, and that's what I'm talking about, building your own free index fund. Uh, and that's, that's what, I, what I love about it. It gets me so excited. I've set it up and I just put it on autopilot. I auto invest, I have the auto invest on, I can show you what that looks like. I have the auto invest on every single day when I transfer money in or if I get dividends. So for example, if I get dividends that are paid out to me, then I have those auto investing. And this is the cool thing that I love about M1 Finance is you've probably heard of, of drips, you know, when, when a when a stock drips, it means it's it's reinvesting those dividends back into the company. Like for example, if if uh, for example, Deer and Company here they paid a dividend in other brokerage accounts. In some cases, it will then if if Deer is a is a drip company. Not all companies are, are drip companies. It will then automatically invest the dividends back into that company. Now with M1 Finance, I'm leveraging that those dividends from Deer and Nucor, for example, and then reinvesting them into my underweight holdings to really maximize the power of compounding. And that's how I've set it up. So everybody, that is what, I, what I'm talking about here with creating or building my own free index fund uh, with M1 Finance. And, and it really gets me, me excited. And you know, I could go in and if, if I didn't want to, if I wanted to take a more conservative approach, once again, I could go over here and I could check out what are my favorite, uh, you know, conservative or, or aggressive, whatever fits your style um, and your risk tolerance, you could invest into individual index funds or ETFs. And that's the cool thing about M1 Finance, everybody, is you can do literally both. And another cool thing what you can do is you can build a pie or a slice within a slice. For example, if I wanted to go in, let's say this is my overall uh, overall pie, this is my actual portfolio, if I wanted to and add an extra layer of diversification, I could then go in and see this uh, dividend ETFs, this uh, slice that we just barely made, right, These with these five ETFs, I could then go in and I could, oops, let's go back here, I could go in and I could actually add this to my overall portfolio. So already I have individual companies, I have those and they're, they're set up by sector, I could add an additional layer of diversification with adding these five ETFs into my portfolio. And if I wanted to do it again, I could go in and within one of them, I could build another pie, another full-blown pie. pie. Um, you can you know go, go crazy on it. But I, I wouldn't really recommend doing that if you're first starting out. When I first set up my account uh, back um, in May, I believe it was, or, or April, um, I really tried to keep it simple. I didn't want to overcomplicate things, um, but you can. I mean, you can get as really as granular as, as you want. And what, what I'm really talking about is I, I really want to grow passive income. Right now in my life, I'm not leveraging or, or using my paychecks here, my dividend paychecks, to pay for my living expenses. Um, that, is, that is to come. Right now, I'm still amassing a portfolio where in the future, I hope through, through dividend increases that I am able to per, uh, pay for my living expenses through my, div, my earned dividend income. All right. So everybody, that is how I have it set up. If you want to get it started for yourself, you can go do it. The cool thing about M1 Finance, right, is you can set it up for free. You don't even have to, to fund your account to go and play around with it. So if you are curious, you can go check it out. You can build these pies exactly what I just did without even setting up your, your banking account information. You can create it, and if you're comfortable and you're ready and you want to do it, you can then fund your account and then have, uh, you know, set up your automatic transfers, all of that good stuff. But just to test it out and play around with it, you can go do that for free. I'll make sure that I leave a, a link in the description below. If you use the link, it is a um, an affiliate link. If you sign up, you get 10 bucks, I get 10 bucks. It's a win-win, pretty cool setup that they have there. And uh, yeah, you, and once you once you funded your account for a hundred bucks, but that's really not the purpose of the video. The purpose of the video is really to share with you how I've set it up and how I was able or how I am able to invest into this style absolutely free. 
With, and now, though the, uh, the ETFs that I'm purchasing or buying into, they have very low uh, expense ratios, but this is absolutely, truly free, and I love it, and it, it really gets me excited. So everybody, that's everything that I had for you. If you're new to the channel, I'd invite you to subscribe, like the video, and I will catch you all in the next video.